Open Road 3 was the program to develop and test a minimum interval takeoff capability for B-58 aircraft under simulated wartime conditions. The program was conducted during the period 14 to 22 January 1963 at the Air Force Flight Test Center with the aircraft seen arriving here. The program had two objectives. The primary objective was to determine a minimum safe takeoff interval between aircraft. This included an evaluation of such factors as ground turbulence in the wake of preceding aircraft, aircraft jet wash after liftoff, effects of atmospheric conditions, and the effects of AB light on pilot vision, all under both day and nighttime conditions. The secondary objective was to develop a technique for rapid deployment of multiple numbers of aircraft using MITO. This included observance of all checklists and operational requirements and taxi from a simulated alert posture under wartime scramble conditions. The test program was divided into seven test series and included taxi tests as well as in-trail takeoffs and alternate guideline takeoffs at both normal training and maximum growth weight. The program was directed by Strategic Air Command Headquarters and was conducted by the 19th Air Division. Participating in the program were six B-58 aircraft and their maintenance and flight crews three from the 43rd Bombardment Wing at Carswell Air Force Base, Texas, and three from the 305th Wing at Bunker Hill Air Force Base, Indiana. The first day's testing was devoted to establishing taxi procedures. These studies were made during the day and again that night. These tests were used to verify scramble ground check procedures to determine how to control the space between aircraft without excessive use of brakes and throttle, to determine the proper speed and radius for turning onto the runway, how to accelerate through the military power to afterburner range while rolling, and to determine whether or not airflow, noise patterns, and afterburner glow would affect the following aircraft. The intent was to make interval spacing solely the responsibility of the individual pilots without any outside assistance. This helicopter view shows the degree of uniform spacing distances the pilots were able to achieve and maintain after only a minimum amount of practice. The taxi distance necessary to achieve a desired 15 second takeoff interval was approximately 300 feet. Standard spacing for lights on taxi strips is 200 feet at Air Force Base installations. By maintaining a one and a half light space between a leading and trailing aircraft, a 300 foot or 15 second separation is automatically achieved. For any interval more or less than this, of course, the distance would be adjusted accordingly. The pilots found that the separation intervals were relatively easy to maintain by anticipating the use of power and brakes. This circumstance can be compared to the reaction necessary to maintain a correct flight attitude during air-to-air -air refueling. The planned taxi speed was determined from the 15-second desired MITO interval to be approximately 15 miles per hour. Since aircraft instruments do not indicate these low speeds, a car was used in the beginning to pace the aircraft. The pilots found that they were able to gauge these speeds for themselves after very little practice. The first turns onto the runway were made at 20 miles per hour. When the turn was approximately two-thirds completed, the power was advanced to military and then into afterburner for takeoff simulation. At the completion of the first two runs covering taxi to takeoff initiation, it was concluded that this procedure caused the aircraft to veer heavily and could possibly create tire problems under maximum weight conditions. Notice here also that the afterburner on the outboard engine failed to light with the others and the aircraft veered slightly. This was found to be a very minor problem. Only minimum steering correction was needed to bring the aircraft back to normal while completing afterburner light off. To best achieve uniform transition from taxi to takeoff, the following procedure was developed during these investigations. The technique involves taxing out at minimum power, 
As the aircraft is aligned with the runway, power is advanced to military momentarily, and a check is made of the instruments to ensure that all engines are stabilized. The throttle is then rapidly advanced to full AB. The best afterburner lights were obtained using this procedure, and no tire damage was incurred. Results of the initial taxi tests revealed that no major problems existed in this phase of the operation. The second day of testing was the beginning of the actual flight portion of the program. These tests were made with the aircraft working in pairs from a standing start position. The purpose here was to determine a minimum safe interval between two aircraft taking off in trail on the same guideline. These helicopter views were taken with a slow motion camera and do not reflect real time intervals which were actually much shorter than they appear in these high angle scenes. These tests were made at a training gross weight of 150,000 pounds. The objective here was to start with a time interval that was well within anticipated safe limits and reduce that time to study the effects of backwash and turbulence on the trailing aircraft. The unstick time interval between the first pair of aircraft was 30 seconds. Between the second pair, the time interval was reduced to 19 seconds. The unstick interval between the final pair of aircraft was reduced to 16 seconds. No problems of any kind were encountered. The pilots reported that these close interval single line takeoffs were very much like normal individual takeoffs, with no special turbulence or backwash effects noted, even at liftoff and initial climb up. After liftoff, the aircraft followed the accepted alternate left and right turn pattern. In all instances, the takeoffs were evaluated as completely safe. Following our single guideline test, multiple aircraft takeoffs were examined using an alternating aircraft sequence on parallel guidelines. The two lines were separated by a distance of 100 feet. As in the initial takeoff test, the aircraft were worked in pairs with the time interval being gradually reduced until a minimum safe time interval was reached. These first two sets of takeoffs were also initiated from standing start positions with the last pair of aircraft using the rolling turn MITO technique. Takeoff weights were still at the training gross weight of 150,000 pounds. The unstick time interval between the first two aircraft was 13 seconds. Time between the second and third pairs was the same for each at 6.5 seconds. Pilots reported that no severe backwash or turbulence was experienced. The worst condition that was encountered was compared to what is customarily experienced in routine rough air takeoffs. This view shows one of the aircraft experiencing a minor wing down condition. At no time was more than five degrees of wing down noted. The maximum stick displacement necessary to correct for it was approximately three quarters of an inch. With the ability of the B-58 to perform these takeoffs now fully established, multiple aircraft takeoffs using the rolling technique were tested. These demonstrations were made under both day and nighttime conditions and included flights with the aircraft at the maximum gross weight of 163,000 pounds. All six aircraft participated and basic interval spacing was now initiated at the beginning of the taxi runs from the ramp area. Significant throughout this entire exercise was the fact that conditions completely simulated those that would be found at any SAC air base. Aircraft support was handled entirely by SAC maintenance crews brought in with the aircraft. Although the Edwards airstrip is much larger, 
The runway area used in these tests was limited to the typical 200-foot width, 12,000-foot length SAC runway. The guidelines shown here were painted on especially for this exercise, just as they could be at any base where B-58 minimum interval takeoffs are needed. The guidelines can be added with minimum effort in just a few hours' time. The turn pattern is established by following and spot painting the trail of a B-58 taxiing at 15 miles per hour. Painting of the lines can then be accomplished with available line painting equipment. The runway guidelines are 100 feet apart, paralleling the center line and extend 1,000 feet up the runway after the turn. Unstick intervals for the six aircraft maximum gross weight takeoffs average 15.4 seconds. No problems of any serious nature were encountered, and all aircraft were in a combat go condition after becoming airborne. Pilots reported that the entire exercise was very routine. The importance of the taxi phase of the operation cannot be overemphasized. The key to achieving the proper time interval is in maintaining proper spacing all through the taxi phase of the minimum interval takeoff. Tire checks were made in all takeoff operations just as in normal single aircraft B-58 takeoffs. These were made approximately 1,000 feet before reaching the head of the runway and proper taxi intervals were maintained. Abort procedures are similar to those outlined in the handbook. In the event of an emergency, the pilot in the problem aircraft simply calls out the standard abort, abort, abort. Those aircraft at speeds greater than S1 decision speed are not affected. Aircraft at speeds less than S1 immediately go into accepted stopping procedures straight ahead if they have already initiated takeoff rolls. The MITO nighttime tests included taxi runs and demonstrations of multiple aircraft takeoffs using the established rolling technique. Both maximum training and maximum tactical gross weights were used. The ramp training weight was at 150,000 pounds. The ramp tactical gross weight was 163,000 pounds. Here, aircraft running lights are contrasted with the runway lights as aircraft taxi from left to right. Pilots reported no ill effects in the taxi portion of the nighttime run. This film shows the engine flame as being white. This is a peculiarity of the film itself. Engine afterburner flame actually appears a soft blue-yellow in color. Two separate nighttime sorties were made on the final two evenings of the program. There were no problems found in pilot reactions to the afterburner flame from the aircraft ahead at any point in the takeoff roll or climb out. Attempts were made to get readings on a light meter from the plane ahead, but there was not enough light to get even a minimum reading. Pilot reports as to the lack of light problem were supported by the flight surgeon from the Air Force Flight Test Center. These night sorties confirmed that minimum interval takeoffs of multiple B-58 aircraft could be done in a routine manner with only a minimum amount of training. The training gross weight night takeoffs were made at an average unstick interval of 11.6 seconds between aircraft. Maximum gross weight nighttime unstick intervals averaged 15.4 seconds and fully demonstrated the satisfactory achievement of all Open Road 3 program objectives. The B-58 long ago demonstrated its ability to stand operational ground alert and to be kept on a ready basis for any eventuality.
It is also demonstrated that it can get wheels rolling in two minutes and five seconds under simulated combat mission conditions. The effectiveness of any weapon system is summed up in its ability to answer the call and deliver its punch at the precise moment it is needed. To protect a long-range missile, you bury it deep in the ground in a hard site. To protect an airplane, you get it airborne. Today, in the event of an attack, the early warning system will provide us with about 15 minutes reaction time. With the now demonstrated ability of the B-58 to scramble in numbers using the ground alert and MITO techniques, we are assured that its chances of getting caught on the ground are greatly reduced. Our demonstrations were made using six aircraft, but the MITO ability can be programmed for any number, at any time, at any SAC airbase.